you strong. Hello everyone, my name is Danielle Powell. First, I would like to give honor to Pastor Bella. That is my big sis in Christ. And I'm so grateful that the Lord connected us in this season. And she has been a blessing to my life. I love her ministry. And she is just making a huge impact all over the world. I am in New York City and Pastor Bella is in Nigeria. But the Lord saw it fit for us to connect. And I'm so grateful for what the Lord is doing in your life. I am the founder of Singles Who Pray. I am a Christian life coach, and I'm also a content creator for YouVersion. I have uh, many devotionals on that on the Bible app. You can find my devotionals on Bible.com. So I will start with um, telling my testimony. I'll start from my childhood up to now. So I grew up in the background of ministry, my um, grandparents started a church located in Brooklyn, New York. My grandfather was a pastor and my grandmother was the first lady. My grandfather passed on when I was about 11 years old and my aunt, she took over as the pastor of the church and she's currently my pastor and she's pushing the legacy on. I have a lot of um, pastors in my family, uncles and cousins who are um, ministers and also some other cousins who were pastors so I was always surrounded by ministry as a child and as a child my perspective I felt like I was always in church because if you are in church more than on Sundays you feel like you're always in church because you know my friends they weren't you know going to church as often or they didn't go to church at all so I always felt like I was the church girl that always had to be in church and that bothered me as a child as if I could really be honest and I also came from like a strict background my dad was pretty strict we couldn't listen to certain secular music in the household or watch certain shows. So I was, you know, felt like everything was restrictive of, you know, church and then also just certain things we couldn't do. But then later on, my dad, he saw that my um, siblings and I, we had passion for dancing and we wanted to dance in our, this community program and we wanted to be in the marching band. So my father let us do that which is really great for us because we wanted to be around other kids and just being in um, different community programs that just gives kids um, some you know, determination and ambition. So I'm so grateful that finally my dad and my mom was like, you guys can go and be kids. <laughs> so um, when I turned about um, 18, 19, I decided that, you know, I wasn't going to go to church as often because I was an adult because I felt like a majority of my life that I was forced to go to church. It wasn't like something I had no choice. But m many of us, you know, as you know, when we're Christ young Christians, um, we are forced to go to church. So that was my thing. I wanted to, ex to experience life on my own terms. And I decided to, I wasn't um, attending church. I wanted to see what the world was about, and I stopped going to church altogether. Like, I would go to church because it was my family church. I would go support, like, you know, anniversary service, special services, but I got um, really into um, doing event planning um, in the world, and I just lost So at my 19, my sister and I, we decided to start event planning entertainment company. We plan events for celebrities and record labels and athletes, and we manage DJs, and it we felt that we were doing something so big. And at the time, it was big. Like, we were able to plan events for major celebrities, but it wasn't honoring God. And in this season of my life, um, you know, I was exposed to a lot of different things, you know, drinking, partying, and just an industry that is not that great. And, you know, we came in there wanting to really be business owners. And that was the goal. But when you're young, and you're, you have access to all this fame and status and money, you can really lose yourself. And in this season of my life, you know, things were going well, you know, I had like one of the biggest parties in New York City at the time. 
Um, everybody was coming, every celebrity, anybody that was somebody was coming to my events. But I was like dying inside. Like I wasn't happy. And I was just doing this because, you know, I really thought this was like a goal that I wanted to accomplish because the end goal was that I wanted to open up um, different um, establishments, you know, around the world um, in different venues. That was my goal, like to do this, to get to where I wanted to go. But on the way, I lost myself. I was like partying every night, drinking every night, very far away from the Lord. I always believed in God and I never turned from the belief of knowing Jesus and everything, but my lifestyle was not honoring. It was the point where I didn't even want to hear about God. I was so lost that, you know, I didn't want to be around anyone that went to the church. I didn't want to hear about, I didn't want anybody to tell me nothing about no Bible scriptures, anything. I was so far gone. And this went on for uh, many years. You know, I was in this industry, you know, things were taking off, but me, my um, internal self was not nowhere near God. And um, it was this f funny um, thing. My mom, she used to send, because I used to have parties every week. And, you know, I'm in the you know club from like 11 to 4 a.m. in the morning. My mom would send me, I don't know if you guys know Jamal Bryant. He's a pastor. And he had this like prayer call or some voice message she would send to my phone. Every night I'm at my event. And sometimes I will be drunk. And then sometimes I wouldn't be as drunk, but it would be nights where she probably knows that I'm like drunk or something. And I will listen to him and he'll be preaching. And sometimes I'm not really, you know, there, but then sometimes I'm like, oh my gosh, my mom just sent me this sermon. And I know that that was convicting me because even sometimes after I listened to it, I knew that I was not supposed to be in this place, but I just kept going because I had something to prove to myself. I had something to prove to the people who were attending my events. And I just didn't want to stop doing these parties and doing, you know, being in this industry. So um, just different things just kept happening to me um, being in this industry. Like all the things that I was doing just started to crumble. Uh, one of my biggest paid party just stopped. The owner closed down the club. And then it is like everything I kept touching just was not working out. And then even my, dri my drive for doing events and working with all these major record labels and all these celebrities, it was just not there anymore. I just felt like I didn't want to do this anymore. And I knew at that moment that the Lord was working on my heart. Because I knew that, you know, God called me from very young. I knew that God called me to do work for him. But I just ran. I was like, I don't want anything to do with any ministry, any religion stuff. I didn't want anything to do with it. And for many years, that's why I kept running, running towards the things that were not honoring God, doing things that God was not. I shared happy. all of that to speak to some prodigal daughters and sons on today. I know what it's like to be a prodigal daughter. I wanted to go out there and do my own thing, but the Lord knew that I needed to come back to him. So the Lord is looking to have a relationship with you on today. Don't think about all the horrible things that you have done in your past that you are ashamed of. The Lord forgives you. You don't know how many things that I have done that I didn't even mention on today that I that was horrible. But the Lord's grace, his love covers our sins. And I just want to encourage someone who may feel like they're too far gone to come back to Christ or they are looking to give you're you're looking to give your life to Christ but you just feel like you are not good enough or you feel like you don't fit in with the church, you know, the church um lingo you don't fit in with the church clicks but i'm here to tell you don't worry about those things worry about getting a relationship with christ christ loves you he can't wait to have a relationship with you so i just want to give a few tips if you're a new christian or you're looking to rededicate your life to christ like i have i rededicated my life to christ 11 years ago it's the best decision i have ever made in my life and i'm not going to say that 
this walk with Christ is going to be so easy, but it's going to be worth that. So first thing you need to know is know that you are forgiven. Nothing, and I say nothing you have done is 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 not worth forgiveness. The Lord went on the cross for our sins. So let's go to 1 John 1 and 9. But if we confess our sins to him, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins, to cleanse us from all wickedness. I know you may feel like you're not forgiven, but on today, I need you guys to know that you are forgiven. You are saved by his grace. The Lord just can't wait to have a relationship with you. Another tip I'm going to share is develop a prayer life. One of the things that I struggle with in my um, walk in the beginning and even when I was, you know, going so hard with, for the Lord, I struggled with prayer. Like I would always set a time to pray, then distractions come or I just don't have it in me to pray. And even if I was going to prayer nights at my church, my mind was just scattered and the enemy was trying so hard to fight me in my prayers because he knew once I got a prayer life, once I started to go in in prayer, things will change in my life. So let's go to First Thessalonians 5 and 7, pray without ceasing. And that just means to pray, pray daily. Don't look for fancy words, fancy verbiage on tr trying to sound like other people. That was another thing that I struggled with. I saw people who prayed so good. I'm like, I wish I could pray like that. But the Lord was telling me, pray in your own style. Be who you are. I hear your praise. Pray like you are. So I'm here to tell someone, just be yourself. Don't look for fancy words. Allow the Holy Spirit. If you're not filled with the Holy Spirit, seek God for the Holy Spirit. It makes pray, praying very easy. So I just want to tell you guys, develop a prayer life. Don't look to have perfect prayers. Pray from your heart. Because the Lord likes when we are real and authentic, not being fake. Okay? Pray daily. Develop a lifestyle. If you have to get a friend to pray with you just to keep that um, thrive to pray, get a friend. Pray Tip with I would give is read your Bible daily. The Bible is not a book of rules, but a book of guidelines. I know sometimes we feel like the Bible is just, you know, you can't do this, you can't do that. But the Bible is great instruction for life. It gives us discernment, gives us wisdom. And let's go to 2 Timothy 3 and 16. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, and for instructions in righteousness. To know the Bible is to know God. And when I first gave my life to Christ, I struggled because I couldn't understand a lot of things in the Bible and I just had to pray, you know, the Lord give me more clarity on what I'm reading because I don't understand it. And, you know, through the Holy Spirit, I was able to understand. I love reading the Bible now. Like, that's something that I love to do. And um, as I mentioned earlier, I'm a content creator for YouVersion. YouVersion is a perfect app for new believers, for believers alike. They have so many different um, versions of the Bible. You may not be a King um, James reader. You may read um, New Living Translation because it's easier to understand. Myself, when I first gave my life back to Christ, I was reading like NIV and New Living um, Translation. And now I go back and forth to different versions of the Bible. But don't stop yourself from reading the Bible because you don't understand because there there are a lot of different um versions of the bible that is so simple to read so i just want to tell you guys is just you know read the bible let that be the first thing you do when you after prayer when you wake up read a, a verse and start your day um that is how we get to know god and be closer to god and it's just amazing when you just start to do it and you make a habit you'll see your life change because you have the word in your heart you're not just reading it but you have it 
hid in your heart. So I just pray that this word today and testimony has encouraged someone out there. Um, I so happy to share my testimony, some of it. And I just pray that someone out there that's listening is uplifted, encouraged, and know that the Lord loves you. And I just want to say a special thank you to Pastor Bella for allowing me to share on your wonderful platform. And I just um, pray blessings over your life that you will continue to run into the direction God is calling you, that God will enlarge your territory, that God will send all the men and women into your life that you can coach, that you can pray over, and that you can serve. And I'm just praying God's supernatural blessings over your life. God bless.